like all this, Jeff. <laughs> Looks like an impromptu sit-up contest, and the final score is 10 to nothing in favor of Embo. What? Wait a minute! Josh has been pantsed. Do we even have a bell yet, Gorman? No, we do not. This is all pre-match shenanigans and more shenanigans. And fabulous just... They tried to return the favor, but McKenzie's showing off some great new tights. He was ready for it. Foiled again. Always bring a spare. And the fans going nuts for Fabu Huss. Possibly their new favorite tag team here in the IWC. Well, here we go. We got tag team action here in the International Wrestling Cartel. We kick off our Hell Hath No Fury live event. And it's Fabu Huss, the team of John McChesney and Jimmy Jacobs, kicking things off against M-Dog and Josh. Series of shots to the throat and headbutts take down Josh. I'm Jeff Gorman, along with Joe Dombrowski. And a chop to M-Dog. And Joe, it looks like one of your favorite teams of all time is off to a slow start. Now wait a second, Gorman. You love these guys. You're practically their agent, practically the third member of the team. Matt Cross and Josh Prohibition, they've been a great team. They've done some great things. But as of late, I can't explain, nor can I endorse the actions of Matt Cross and what he's been doing in these matches. Right to the eyes, down goes M-Dog, Matt Cross. And I'm, I'm very happy to hear that, Joe, because before, you would endorse these guys if they pushed a little old lady into the street. But now it seems like you've come to your senses and you're recognizing them for the cheaters that they are. Although they are great wrestlers. Remember this past July, as we see an arm drag take down by Jimmy Jacobs into the arm bar, Matt Cross and John McChesney had two great matches at our untelevised events, stole the show both nights. The rubber match was supposed to be here at Summer Sizzler two weeks ago. However, Matt Cross had a facial injury, and he grew bitter over the fact he could not compete in that ring. And he interfered in that match, and now we see M-Dog on the apron. He still has that uh, bandage from his facial injury. But we will see M-Dog and Fabulous, although it's in a tag team setting. And now their partners, Josh and Jacobs. Not a good idea. There goes Jacobs getting fired up. It's been quite a few months since we've seen Josh Prohibition here at IWC. He obviously hasn't been studying tapes all summer. Jimmy Jacobs has one of the hardest heads in the business. And a big elbow to the top of the head rocks Josh Prohibition. Jacobs whips him in. Swing and a miss, Josh puts on the brakes, and there's an exploder suplex. The T-Bone Prohibition Plex takes down Jimmy Jacobs and into the cover. And a two count. Jacobs able to kick out. Nice move by Josh and a tag to M-Dog. This is a team that has made it to the top. They're former IWC Tag Team Champions. But the question is, can anyone stop Fabu Huss from making it? They're a very hot team as well. Fabu Huss has been on such a roll. Now we have M-Dog going for the cover. Two count. But at the same time, you have to look at Matt Cross and Josh Prohibition's credentials, the tag team championships they've held all over the world, the trip to Big Japan Pro Wrestling that Matt Cross went on, their DVD, the video game, etc., etc., etc. No tag team in IWC is more decorated than Matt and Josh. Well, there are teams that have won the belts more than Matt and Josh, although they are quite multimedia sensations, and they definitely have the ability to win the belts again, as we saw the, actually we heard the phantom audio tag. And, and on that subject of, of new attitudes, look at Josh Prohibition. Lost that hair. He's got a full beard now. We saw Matt Cross a couple weeks ago. Damn near getting into a fight with a fan. These guys have an intense side, a very intense side, they're starting to bring out. And we'll see if it's enough to stop Fabu Huss. And a knee to the gut does just that on Jimmy Jacobs. Jacobs coming close to winning the IWC Championship recently against Eric Ecstasy. But now he's back in tag team competition. Big vertical suplex by Josh. Nicely done. Prohibition gets two from referee Bruce Gray. And now, Jacobs looking for a tag. John McChesney, the fabulous one, getting ready to make his way in, but he can't do it yet. And, and you mentioned that matchup between Jimmy Jacobs and IWC champion Eric Ecstasy. Remember the punishment Jacobs took in that matchup? Ball, falling on his head to the outside. They would be a tag to McChesney. Here we go. Fabulous he really needs a tag to fabulous John McChesney. And the fans are hustling up. Here comes Josh. Ate a big boot. Big fuzzy boot. And a nice Hurricane Rana. If it's one thing we've seen from Jacobs over the past year plus we've known him, it's his incredible resilience and his ability to absorb pain and punishment. Now the cobwebs are in his brain. He's got to find his corner and get in John McChesney. Here comes m Dog. And here comes Fabulous! And this is what we've been waiting to see. 
fabulous John McChesney taking down his rival M Dog and M Dog's partner Josh. Remember McChesney and Cross have a huge grudge match about 24 hours after this taping up in Erie, our Erie Explosion live event. Oh! And I bet they heard that shop up in Erie. We can see a tombstone. Modified Snake Eyes, Vintage McChesney. Oh, you're right. M Dog got rocked, and Fabulous is looking good in there. Right in that injured facial region. And you hear McChesney laying the bad mouth on M Dog. Now to the top. Nobody Hall. Missed on the cross body, but Josh is right there to capitalize. He's ready to pounce. Good looking back suplex. Josh is going to go for the pin right here. Hooks the leg, and Jacobs makes the save. You know, speaking of pounce, I think we should mention that John McChesney recently debuted on TNA Impact on Fox Sports Net. Really? Did he face Monty Brown? No, he did not. Uh, oh. Luckily for him, he was in a six-man tag team matchup. Contra code! Yeah? We need to be focused on the action here. Crane kick! Look out, daniel -san. That might have been a little bit of a low blow there. Out to the floor. Here's a boot. And now Fabulous goes for the Tornado DDT, but Josh puts on the brakes again. Oh! Beautiful double arm. And he's going to roll right through. Oh, he's going for the drunken driver, I think. Yes, son. No, Fabulous is going to block it a couple times. And Jacobs breaks it up. M-Dog on top. He got nailed. Whoa, wait a second. Climbing up on the back. Here comes Jacobs. High-risk situation. Is it going to pay off? Superplex on the back. There we go. My God, what a move. Drunken driver, no. Fabulous counters it again. Jockey from a Into a DDT. DDT. Double two, pin. Two, two three. <laughs> Standing victory for Fabulous, beating the former champions, M Dog and Josh. It probably won't be long now until we see Jacobs and McChesney get a long overdue title shot. Yeah. So, Show. I don't think they're scheduled for a match, are they? Keep, no, they're not, but keep in mind, two weeks ago, Bubba came in the ring and accused his faction, the Triple Threat, of having a weak link, but never identified who. Well, Vegas and Gregory had some miscommunication, lost a match. Maybe they'll address these rumors about friction in the Triple Threat. Maybe they will. Here we have another big show here at CCAC. The two individuals are not on the call. show, Dennis Gregory. How many promos start with, let me tell you something. Anyways, what is it? Halloween here tonight? Yeah! Some of our fans deciding to play dress up like their favorite superstar. But anyways,
I'll tell you what, why don't you send two guys out? We'll have a little tag match. What did you say, Mark? Uh, a big star? Well, I'm a huge TV star. Send somebody out. Well, Vegas still bragging about WWE velocity appearances. I would. You might be a huge TV star. Seen some of that friction. Well, the open challenge has been issued. No one seems to be accepting. Spreading were true. Aha. Uh -huh. I said I'd wrestle any man on the card. I'd wrestle any man on the roster. I'd wrestle any man in IWC. So, uh, keep me running back. Well, he is the Wonder Man. Kind of challenge. But at what? Hey, uh, you know the uh, capital of Thailand? came out for two on one and he's getting it. No comment from my partner. A kick by Spectre and Gregory gets sent into his partner, Vegas, with a spear. But Gregory and Vegas can't let this outfit fool him. They have to remember, Glenn Spectre is one of the best wrestlers on this roster. Multi-time tag team champion. That's right, he's got great credentials. He's uh, won a championship over in Japan as well. That's right, went out with the DDT Pro tag team Catchweight champions over in uh, DDT Pro in Japan. And that's what you call a shining hip attack. Oh no. 
I don't want to know what Spectre has in mind. What? I'll say it again. What's happened to Glenn Spectre to make him turn this radically? He's like a fat man in a smorgasbord right now. Wow! Oh! Two for one sale, and down goes Glenn Spectre, the Wonder Man. The old posterior pinch of death. And now, the boots continue as Vegas and Gregory, who have been having some dissension between them, put their heads together and send uh, Wonder Man out to the floor. We gotta talk about that. Two weeks ago, Bubba the Bulldog came out here and said there was a weak link in this in his triple threat. Any idea who he meant by that? Well, he didn't mean himself, obviously. It's gotta be Vegas or Gregory. I can't look at either of these two and call him a weak link. Thanks to both Vegas and Gregory, Vegas lost his match to Dirk Ziggler at Summer Sizzler. Ooh. And as Gregory nails Glenn Spectre right into the ring post, keep in mind it was Bubba the Bulldog who took the fall in the cage match back at Cage Fury. So what you're saying, Joe, is that they're all a bunch of weak links. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying none of them is worse than the other. All three of them are great athletes, four heavyweight titles between them. I think if Bubba's going to blame a weak link, all he's doing is try to transfer the blame from himself to somebody else. Well, there are different ways of motivating your team, and that is the way of doing it. We'll see if Bubba can actually make his team stronger or if it ends up splintering them apart. But right now, they're working well together against the Wonder Man. It's working so far, but it is two on one. I guess this is, is this technically a three-way dance? I guess it is technically a three-way dance. There's no tag, so it must be. That's right. It's not a two-on-one handicap match. This is a three-way as Vegas... Toss the Spectre into the corner. So we're only going to get one winner here, whether it's Vegas or Gregory, or if Spectre can pull out another one. And through the months we've known the triple threat, strength in numbers is always how they've acted best. Whether it was Shane Douglas or Dirk Sigler, Chris Candido or Glenn Spectre, they love to double and triple team. Well, we'll see what Spectre can do. Like you mentioned, he uh, had a very successful tag team here, part of the Devil's Advocates. But I'm really impressed with how quickly he's been able to transition into being a single star. It really didn't take Glenn very long to establish himself. Oh, Glenn absolutely gelled as a single star, especially as a serious wrestler. But I don't know what to make of him as of late with this whole Wonder Woman regalia. It seems to be working for him. He seems happier than he ever has before. Great suplex by Gregory, and he's going to follow up with a bunch of right hands to the face. And it is a great mind game. You saw Gregory in Vegas. They spent five minutes trying not to even touch the guy. So it could be a little uh, reverse psychology. I was really surprised that this whole Wonder Man thing wasn't a one-shot deal. It's part of his repertoire, and he's using it to his advantage. Here's the Boston Crab by Gregory. We'll see if Spectre's going to submit. And look at the angle Glenn Spectre's lower back is at. And Bruce Gray says no. Spectre does not submit. He reaches the ropes. Oh, here, here we go. And Vegas says, let me show you how it's done. A little bit of arguing. Those are been in a two count. A little bit of dissension in the ranks so far. A little bit of bickering, but they're still on the same page. Very interesting, I see. If one goes for the cover, the other's not there to interrupt. Do they perhaps care more about team unity and getting this over with than they do about personal success? I'm really not sure, Joe. Time's going to tell. I really don't know exactly which direction this is going, and that's why we all love pro wrestling so much. And they're going to double team Spectre again. No, a good block and a double bulldog. Tremendous resourcefulness sticking on his feet for Glenn Spectre. Spectre pulling that move absolutely out of nowhere. Now he's got to try to surprise one of these guys with another big move. Because you only have a few openings in a match like this. If you're Spectre. Nailing both men. Gregory makes a move and gets thrown out to the floor right in front of my poor little daughter. But it's only a matter of time. How long can you fight off these two successful, talented individuals? Here we go. And there's the shining hip attack right to the face. That could be it. Spectre! No, only one. Vegas says no dice. Apparently that, that move more humiliation than effectiveness as Vegas pops right back up, hits a side slam, no, sets up a double team. He, well, he's won matches with that before, and there's the leg drop off the knee. Great double team move by two-thirds of the new triple threat. Here we go. Gregory, and now we see Vegas. Now, here we go. When you hang around a guy like Bubba the Bulldog as long as they have, it was only a matter of time before egos became into question. And you're right, Joe. I'm actually kind of surprised we didn't start seeing this earlier in the match. Both these guys are now fighting each other to get the pin. 
Wait a minute. We apologize for that, and then we, this is starting to turn into a regular triple threat match now. It certainly is. Spectre, it bought him a little bit of time. Vegas avoiding the argument with Gregory, and he closed by Spectre. Look at the disgust on Gregory's face. He's getting frustrated, not only having to put up with Glenn Spectre's machinations, but Jimmy Vegas' selfishness. Not that Gregory doesn't have any. <laughs> they both have a lot. Whipping in a clothesline by Gregory took out Jimmy Vegas, and now I believe tempers Will Flair. More miscommunication. That's what cost him the match with Dirk Ziggler and cost that argument after that match. Spectre's chance now caught. Here we go. Spectre rolls up Vegas. We get two and three. Wow. Spectre won it. Joe, how did he do it? There's a shocker right there. Dennis Gregory looked like he might have te tweaked his knee on something. Wasn't able to get back in the ring in time. Spectre counters Vegas' one arm bandit. Rolls him up for the victory. Glenn Spectre, I, I don't know what's wrong with this guy, but much props to him defeating two former two time heavyweight champs. And Spectre's celebration begins, and Vegas and Gregory cannot believe it. And I think they're probably going to point the finger of blame at each other one more time. Bubba is going to look at this match and say, who is the weak link in this team? here in the IWC at Super Hentai, taking on simply the best, Carlton Kaz. My name is Jeff Gorman. I'm joined by Joe Dombrowski here in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania at CCAC South Campus. A good one-on-one -on -one match between a couple of outstanding singles wrestlers, and Kaz has an upcoming shot at the Super Indy title coming his way. That's why right, Carlton Kaz a couple of weeks ago at Summer Sizzler defeated fabulous John McChesney for the number one contendership to the Super Indy Championship. Wait, what was that? Hentai did not hit Kaz in the nose. We got a quick roll up and it's going to be a one count. Kaz trying to put one over on the referee. He may be colorblind, but he's not blind. Kaz trying to use some resourcefulness. He's going to have to use everything to win the Super Indy title. There have not been very many people to hold the Super Indy belt and one of them is Super Hentai, our first champion. We should put an asterisk next to that number contendership because McChesney was cheated out of that opportunity in his own hometown of Erie by Matt Cross, and they have a grudge match in Erie the same night Cass challenges Saban. Joe, I have to disagree with you. You know I'm Mr. You know, go along with the rules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It can be pretty annoying, but he beat him one, two, three. There's no asterisk. Cass is your top contender. Sorry, I didn't mean to channel the uh, the spirit of commentators past, but you know how it is. Cass working on the arm of Hentai, trying to keep his positive momentum going. Hentai flips out of it and works on the arm himself. We should talk about Super Hentai. He's had his problems as of late with Sebastian Dark, the son of a thousand bastard corpses. Attacked him after his match with Alex Shelley, after Hentai had finally put Shelley in his place once and for all. A couple weeks ago, Sebastian Dark, a brutal assault that was only stopped by Hentai's friend Dirk Ziggler. And there's something about Super Hentai, arm drag takedown, and a nice drop kick you know, Hentai really should be flattered because he is pretty much one of the standard bearers here in the IWC. It seems like nice head scissors takedown. It seems like whenever Hentai gets done with one brutal long-term feud, another one jumps right on him and tries to, again, make a bigger name for himself at Hentai's expense. Hentai is really a top guy because everybody's after him, it seems like. Oh, no doubt about that. Anytime somebody wants to make a quick name for themselves, they try to take out Hentai, one of the most prolific IWC stars of all time. Check Whoa. this out. Oh, Hentai hit very, very hard. 
going for a corkscrew plunge off the second rope. Kaz out of the way, and Hentai hit nothing but wood. That's why you call it high risk. Hentai overshot Kaz by just one or two inches. He ended up hitting flat on that ground instead of Kaz's body. No mat, no nothing. Hentai is down. And you can hear that thud all the way up here. And if he can even make his way to his feet, I'll be astonished. Hentai's this might be the end of the match, Joe. Hentai's a fighter. He's never quit. He's never laid down for anybody in his life. He's got the perseverance. He's got the guts. You gotta think, if there's any way possible for him to get up, he will. That's what I'm saying. I'm not sh I know he was not gonna quit. I don't know if he physically can get up after falling like that. IWC promoter Norm Connors out here checking out Super Hentai as well. We might have a count out right here because I don't think Hentai... We need, we need some help as the promoter Norm Connors just checking on him. We need to, well, no, he's getting up to his feet. I can't believe it. I guess heads I told him I could continue. I thought he was going to have to be stretched out of here. But is it a situation of more guts than brains? He's already very hurt. Yeah, he's going to continue this match against the Fresh Cavs. He could get seriously injured in the long term here. He could be. This could be Hentai's last match for quite some time. Win, lose, or draw. Kaz can't believe that he's in the ring, and frankly, neither can I. Kaz looking to keep his star on the rise with a win over Hentai. He certainly has him injured. Can he capitalize? And Hentai trying to ground Kaz a little bit with this chancery. Maybe until the cobwebs clear, until Hentai can think of something to do next. Hentai's got to keep Kaz within his grasp, keep under control, until he can regain his senses and plot his further strategy. But Kaz hits the back elbow. Goes for the cover. And a two count. Hentai able to kick out. And not to discredit Carlton Kaz in our talks of Matt Cross's interference, Kaz definitely deserves a championship shot. He's been working very hard in IWC for the past year and a half plus. It's great to see him finally rewarded. And it really says something for uh, the guys up and down the card because sometimes we've seen Kaz in the very first match and he is in line for a title shot. So really, it's really an accomplishment for anybody to even make it to the IWC because up and down the roster, the talent level is so high. I don't mean to sound like a shill, but it's true. It, it is true. All right. Show mode over. Hentai struggling to get up. Kaz looks to continue the punishment, and there's a smart move. Headbutt to the back. Ever heard that phrase? It ain't bragging if you can back it up. I that's think that's right. what we do. Dizzy Dean uh, coined that phrase. Joe Dombrowski, do you know who Dizzy Dean is? He's a guy that Michael Hayes used to quote. Okay. I guess you're kind of right. Just testing your non-wrestling knowledge. Hooks him over. And Kaz goes to the pit, and Hentai's still in. I can't believe that. Another kick out. This guy, he can have a broken back, but he's still going in there not giving up. This is what we've seen from Hentai ever since he started here in the IWC. So much talent, and, you know, he gives away a lot of size a lot of the time, and he has to absorb a lot of punishment a lot of the time, but yet he still manages to come back. He makes up for the lack of size in heart and determination. And seeing this right now, and seeing him persevere through this, it's no wonder. He retained 51 weeks as our longest reigning Super Indy champion to date. And that is something that will always be in Hentai's uh, resume. Nice drop kick by uh, Kaz as Hentai was coming out of that move. You know, it's been hard for Hentai to get back into the title scene because, like I said, everyone keeps starting these blood feuds with him. But that Super Indy title reign still stands up a couple years later as far as I'm concerned. Well, people see Super Hentai as a stepping stone. And that's a big mistake in my part. Crucifix! Very nice, and Hentai gets two. They've seen what Hentai's done. They've seen what he can do. They think, if I can get ahead of that guy, it's going to be instant success. But they're very rarely successful. They are, and a boot. Hentai catches him. An enormous chop, and another rocks Carlton Cavs. He's going to have to prove that he's simply the best tonight. And a clothesline takes Cavs down. Hentai is really running on adrenaline here. Trying to make up for this back injury. You can see it's still bothering him. With some minute a drop kick. Hentai still favoring the back. Goes for the pin. Ooh, Kaz kicked out at two and a half. If Hentai would have had a little more body on body, would have had a little more strength to get on top of Kaz, that could have been it. That could have been it, definitely. And Kaz blatantly right to the eyes. As if he doesn't have enough of an advantage at this point. Hentai with a reversal. Tries to get up ahead of steam, but it's not really working. Oh, he and went for the double knees, and Kaz had it scouted. And down goes Hentai as Kaz took out the knee. And he's going up. Carlton Kaz making his way to the top rope. Hentai trying to recover. We don't see Kaz on top very often. Could be a mistake, and it was. That's right. That's not Kaz's game, and Hentai caught him. 
And that could be a fatal mistake for Carlton Cass if Hentai can follow things up. But who has enough left to gain the advantage at this point? Hentai. All the way to the top. This is going to be high impact for one or both. Kaz looking to fight back. Can he do it? Yes, he does. Oh, right Hentai hit hard. And you're right. That's the second time he's fallen on his back. Here comes Kaz with the elbow off the top. Right into the Ooh, sternum. Oh, yeah. No, two. Notice Kaz, very smart strategy. Focusing on the back, knowing that's the weak point, knowing it can hurt Hentai more than any other movie attempt. Let's see if he follows through. Call for the exploder. Hentai's not having any of that. He still has some fight left in him. Battling it out. Prod hold, countered into. The head across the knee. Almost a face buster. Oh, he did get caught with the exploder. Lands on the back. It counts. Cass hit it out of nowhere and only two. Hentai trying to get himself fired up one more time. Kaz wrestling with a lot more confidence. We've mentioned before, it's taken Kaz a long time to find his niche here in the IWC. Whether it's singles or tag team, looks like Kaz has finally gotten on the roll that he's been trying to get on for about a year now. Here we go. Northern Lights rolls it into the full moon. Can he hit it? No, he can't hit it. Kaz scouted it well. Ever since Kaz has developed a bit of a mean streak, ever since returning to IWC, he has head time with his own move. And he's going to try to roll through and hit the second one. Kaz has been just unbelievable as of late, but Hentai obviously has his own move scouted. You got that right. And Kentai fi Hentai fighting back here with all he's got. Good back and forth match here with Kaz and Hentai. Up the ropes. Precarious position for Hentai. Oh, Hentai better not land on his back one more time. Sunset flip. Hentai gets three. for Super Hentai after taking that terrible fall on the wooden floor. I didn't think he could continue. I thought he was on his way to the hospital, but it turns out he was on his way to the pay window, if you will. Hits the great sunset flip, has just enough leverage to get the pinfall on the three count. I got to give it up to Super Hentai, man. What a tremendous performance. Disrespect. What? 
What's your problem? What is it? I'm a cocktail. You're just a bunch of head tie cheerleaders. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you. Get out of here. Retribution. New Jack issued an open challenge. T Rangela accepted. New Jack dove off the top of the balcony through T through a table to get the win. Two months later, a Cage Fury, another open challenge. T Rangela accepts again, but he wins with a choke slam. This is the rubber match, if you want to call it a match. Every time you see T and New Jack in the ring, something explosive happens. What's it going to be tonight? I don't know if T's going to. Oh, man. I don't know if T is going to recover from this. He got jumped right from the bell. And you know, T. Rangela has been bragging for about nine years about his win over Mick Foley. And now, he's starting to brag about his win over New Jack. Look at his ear. He just dug that object right into his ear and his, his temple. Oh. A ring announcer Chuck Roberts is offended. I can tell. I can see him. It, it's just disgusting. What oh, is no. that? Staple gun. No! No! Oh, my God. Oh, that's sick. Jeez. This is grotesque. And he's just shooting those stables out of the crowd. This is one angry, focused New Jack. He's always angry, but when he's focused, he's unstoppable. Well, he has to reclaim his legend status. Both these guys bona fide legends. Oh, we have one of the staples here. Legitimate staples, folks. That's right. Hear. One more time, digging that sickle right into the head of T. Ranchula. And T has not even gotten started in this match. I'm just glad that my little girl's not at ringside for this one. You're going to feel a staple. It's the stuff. No, keep that away from me. I'm, I'm afraid of office products. Big left hand by New Jack. And T is in a world of trouble. Anything goes, as in just about every New Jack match under the sun. As well as every T match under the sun. As we mentioned, both these guys are legends. New Jack on the national front is a hardcore legend. T. Ranchula, the most decorated local legend you can find, has held just about every championship in this area and beyond. Appeared on WWF television, WCW television. There's not much T. hasn't done either. His career is pretty much complete, and he is paying the price one more time. New Jack is not going to let those words go unchallenged. And it has been all New Jack ever since he jumped T. Ranch. And this is getting really bad. T's blood all over both men's hands. And now T starting to fight back, walloping New Jack. I've, I've had the chance to call a lot of, a lot of grotesque, ugly-looking matches. New Jack balls Mahoney from Super Indy 3 comes to mind, but this just might outdo that. Every time you see these hardcore-style wrestlers, in the ring, they always seem to try to top each other, and it makes you say that's the most 
horrific thing I've ever seen. And one thing's for sure, this is not going to be pretty, it's not going to be scientific, it sure as heck ain't going to be hero versus punk, but it's going to be brutal and it's going to be painful. And T. Rantula, as much as you can attack him, beat him, oh, hit him with second. stuff, choke slam again? Are we going to see it? Does he have the strength to get him up even? No! Oh, down low! The fork right to the gonad. That'll make your family tree go timber. New Jack has proven he will pull all stops. Oh, off. it's not over yet. No. Oh, this is just uncomfortable to watch. I think every man would agree with you. And Norm, get out of there, Norm. Norm might need to stop this thing, oh but he's got to keep himself out of harm's way. Oh, look at his leg. Eh. Look at T's leg. Blood running, blood gushing down he's his leg. Sliced we it open. To, we might need to. Oh my God! This, is, this has to this stop. He's not going for a pin. This has gone too far. Oh my God! It has God. gone too Look far. T has been severely this lacerated, and New Jack is looking for something else under the ring. He can't walk. This is this is crossing the line between wrestling. What and is that now? Shades of, Shades of the X Men. Yeah, it's one of those uh, Wolverine claws. Come on, Norm. Connor's getting in the ring. Get out of the ring, Norm. We gotta stop this. Chris Wood out here from the commission. New Jack, go ahead, do it! I can't do it, and I'll shut the show down. Oh no, not again. No more. I want you to run the floor. Chris Wood says we're gonna shut it. New Jack was coming after Norm. I want you. New Jack, go ahead, do it. You need me. Shut it down. Come to the rock and hard place here. I have to agree this house has gone too far, but we can't have our show shut down. And the security's getting T out of here. He's got to go to the hospital. And Norm's saying, let's turn it around on Chris Wood. Norm says, let's get Chris Wood in here. I think, I think Chris Wood knows what's best for him. He'll get out of here right now. He stopped the match. Don't stick him out in glory. Chris Wood threatening to shut the show down. Look out, Norm's after Chris Wood. He's going to try to get him in the ring. New Jack going to win that way. Here it comes. Norm has the stick. He's run off Chris Wood, and now New Jack's got the mic. And this could be just as dangerous.
When I get you that door, they're gonna have to take that door to shut down. Ain't gonna be no room. That's time to come down. The rain gonna be set in the middle of the floor because it's gonna be a whole lot of leaves and witnesses. All these are the other eyes. I'm gonna do some shit to you. That ain't even done. I didn't even get this started. I always say this stuff. I started it to the fire. The whole book. I started it. So I get to the new part. I'm gonna do it.
Here we go. The IWC Super Indie title is on the line. Chris Saban defending against CM Punk. This is Jeff Gorman along with Joe Dombrowski bringing you the action from West Mifflin, PA. And the champion Saban working on the arm of CM Punk. Saban winning the belt in impressive fashion by winning the Super Indy 3 tournament. All right, that was last May, and it's so great to see Chris Saban back in an IWC ring for the first time in about a month or so, month and a half. Chris Saban has been definitely a fighting champion, however. He's taken care of CM Punk in the past and also successfully defended against Sterling James Keenan. Well, he's beaten Punk once. We'll see if he can do it again. Punk, a former IWC champion, definitely has what it takes to walk off with the Super Indy title tonight. Working on the arm now of Saban as both guys showing respect, keeping things basic early on. Keep in mind, Saban's beaten Punk twice. Once at Kay's Fury, once in the semifinals of the Super Indy Tournament. And battling back and forth, front face lock applied by Saban. And keep in mind of this all-important fact, Chris Saban, in IWC, still undefeated. After all this time, so whoever can beat him will have the title and the uh, honor of being the first guy to ever beat Saban here. Here we go, whoops. Looks like he was going for something big there. But uh, Saban said not yet. And a quick one count. And here in IWC, we've seen Saban defeat AJ Styles, John McChesney, CM Punk, Sterling James Keenan, Jimmy Jacobs. The list goes on and on. Chris Saban has taken on some of the top-notch competitions in this world and come out on top every time he's in this ring. And Saban, also, of course, a big star in the NWA. And the question is, what, is it, what does it take to beat Chris Saban? How is somebody going to do it here in the IWC and win this title? Because Saban is really hot right now. As we mentioned, nice Hurricane Rana and a two. Excuse me? I was just going to call that a beautiful jump up on the Hurricane Rana. It was. Saban has some great aerial ability, a great vertical jump, which only adds to his in-ring style. Saban sending Punk into the ropes. And again, we see that leaping ability with a drop kick. Keeping Punk off balance in the early going, and he gets a two count. Sharp contrast to what we saw two weeks ago at Summer Sizzler with CM Punk and Chris Hero. Not so much of a feeling out process. Both guys just going at it full throttle right off the bat. That's right. The match with Hero ended in a 30-minute draw. We'd like to see a possibly a rematch down the road between those two. Well, but after, after Chris Hero's actions after that match, you got to believe they're going to butt heads one more time. Definitely. Slingshot, leg drop. Saving goes for the pin. But you're right, Joe. This has been a lot more fast-paced. And the one strength that we've always seen out of CM Punk, he can adapt to any opponent's style. He's wrestled so many different opponents throughout the world. He can butt heads with just about anybody. I say that about both of these guys so well versed, Ooh. so worldly as Saban hits the running forearm into the corner. And Saban has controlled most of the early going here. Punk's been on the receiving end. And the future, Chris Saban winds him up. Sends him across to the Irish whip. Nobody home. Punk looking for his chance, and he takes it. And now CM Punk looking to take over some control here in this match. Softening up the midsection. Punk hooks him up and hangs him up. You know, the winner of this match, uh, the next guy in line for a title shot is Carlton Kaz. Yeah, and you, you have to believe that Carlton Kaz might be throwing a little bit off, off his game. It's not too long away before he gets that title shot at our Erie Explosion event, but he doesn't know for sure who the champion's going to be. Well, he better uh, be lurking in the crowd somehow. I don't see him around here, but... This is his last chance to scout him because that title match is coming up very quick. Right to the midsection again, and we see CM Punk's plan to go after the stomach area. Carlton Kaz has been uh, channeling a lot of controversy around him tonight. He might not even be allowed in this building. Who knows? And the mocking Hail Saban chant by CM Punk. Punk goes to the pin and a two count. Notice a little bit of Hail Saban, Hail Punk back and forth from the crowd, picking their favorites. Much like Punk and Hero was until Hero showed his two colors. This matchup is so hard to pick a favorite. Sunset flip! And a two count by Saban, but Punk caught him with an E. These two very evenly match. It could really go either way. And they're both really iron men. We've seen Sam Punk compete in 30-plus minute matches in the past, of course, with Hero and with others. We know Saban can go a long time. And we know our referee Bruce Gray can go a long time. He's the only ref in the building. He hasn't stopped yet. Quite the iron man. The iron ref. Maybe that would be a good cable show for him, Iron Ref. Speaking of referees, we should probably send our well wishes out to uh, referee Roman Law, who's uh, set to enter the armed forces. Oh, I thought you were going to say he was injured, but it's good to see that he's not injured. It seems like uh, being a ref is not a safe uh, 
thing to be, but I hope that Roman, we wish uh, Roman Law the best. Bruce Gray, and here comes the other CM Punk, the guy That's, from the crowd. No, we can't have that. Either that or Punk just put on some weight. He may have eaten a bunch of double cheeseburgers on the way to the ring. And the fans go nuts. And CM Punk sitting there ringside. And there's a tag back to the real CM Punk. You know, I think that fan really deserved that moment of glory, considering how good his costume was. And the fans are still cheering. The real Punk whips Saban in. Around into an abdominal stretch. That was pretty nice. CM Punk, except no imitations. <laughs> and we see Punk grinding that elbow right into the midsection. While well, he has the uh, abdominal stretch on there. Tearing away at the intercostal cartilage in the midsection area, really focusing in on that gut area of Saban. Are you uh, related to Gorilla Monsoon in any way? Would you be serious? Saban trying to fight his way out of this hole and hang on to his super indie championship and a hip toss does just that. Punk looking to get himself back up. And he gets up before Saban and kicks him in the gut again. You gotta wonder what Punk is setting up for here with these continued shots to the midsection. And Punk gets two. Perhaps setting up for a Pepsi plunge to drop Saban right in the front of his body. Perhaps just trying to knock the wind out of Chris Saban when you have your gut aching so much. It's so hard to get all the air necessary into your stomach. One more time. We see CM Punk. Of course, he's not really, con doesn't look like he's concerned with the time limit after what happened with Chris Hero. It looks like he's just come in very, very focused, going for one thing. CM Punk is a methodical wrestler. He knows exactly what he wants to do and exactly how he wants to do it, and he'll let no one get in the way of his plan. And you can see the champ, Chris Saban, gasping for breath in the ring. Punk looking to follow up one more time. Do we indeed have a time limit? I don't know. Chuck Roberts didn't announce it, but of course he didn't announce it for the hero match. It was 30 minutes. And there's an end to Geary, but sometimes title matches go 60 minutes. I think the best answer is... So I, big in Zaguri kick by Saban. That's been his one move in IWC. He's used his turnaround. Whenever he's down, when he needs momentum, he'll break out that in Zaguri kick out of nowhere, and now he's got a chance to recover. And it certainly worked. And Joe, as I was saying, I think the best answer is, I don't know what the time limit is. Well, ask him. He's right down there. I've got to stay up here with you. I can't leave you here by yourself. To be the turning point in the match. You're both got up to the vertical base. Swing and a miss by Punk and Saban lighting up CM Punk against the ropes. Punk absorbing some heavy shots. The champ whips him in and a close line. One more time. Saban looking very good here. Punk tries for one of his own. Backslide. Punk's fighting it. Saban's fighting it. Who's got the muscle? Who's got the leverage? Boot hooks him up. Boom! Turn him loose and drop some face first. A version of the cliffhanger DDT, popularized here in IWC by John McKenzie. No, Over. only two. And a near fall. One second away, Chris Saban was from retaining that championship. Saban has a lot of ways to beat you, and we didn't really think that was going to be one of them, but it almost won the match from right there. But Punk has just as many ways to counter. Fans cheering for Punk, but the Saban fans are out there as well. But Saban's got a rally going, countered into a flapjack, quickly rolling through. He could be going for the STF. Well, CM Punk has really won over these fans in the past few months from jumping off the top of the cage, dumping Sterling James Keenan, taking out Saber, taking out Hero. The fans' adulation for Punk has done nothing but grow in these past few months since he's resumed a full-time schedule here. This is a different version of the, uh, of the STF. He's got the left leg trapped, but he's working on the right arm. Usually, the STF is applied all on one side of the body. It's looking pretty good, but now Saban able to reach the rope. Now Saban won't have either side 100%. Very good. CM Punk knows what he's doing in there, obviously, as his uh, level of success would attest. But can he put away Saban? Can he become the first person here to put away Chris Saban? Trying to follow up. Suplex. No. Turned him loose with a gourd buster. And Punk gets two. Only two. Punk a little frustrated here. Gonna you know, try one more time. Small package. Saban gets two. Saban with a swing and a miss. 
The challenger, CM Punk, goes for an O'Connor roll and instead gets a double boot to the face. Another chance for turning point in this match. Both guys need time to regroup, but this time Saban is up long before Punk. Can the champ put Punk away? Sets him up. For the credenza! Slammed him right on his head. I think that's a two count. I think that's the fastest I've ever seen anybody do that move. It showed its effects there. You see Punk favoring his neck. Definitely has a whiplash-like effect when you execute it like that. Great looking move there. Hooks him up. We could see the cradle shock. No, Punk says, I don't want to see the cradle shock. Countered into an Irish whip. Punk up on the back. Trying to roll forward into a victory roll. Saban rolls through, and that's going to be three. Punk can't believe it. by Chris Saban. Punk tried to roll him over, but Saban kept right on rolling until he was on top. Surprised Punk and got the three count and retained the title. Chris Saban rolls on. He's still the Super Indy champ, and he's still undefeated in the IWC.
you see with former champ Sterling James Keenan taking on a guy making his debut here in the IWC, Petey Williams. And Joe, as our resident NWA TNA expert, you know what Petey Williams brings to the table. Petey Williams has brought so much to the NWA TNA promotion, to their impact show, their pay-per-views, with a move called the Canadian Destroyer, a flip pile drive, pile driver that has to be seen to be believed. It's really become one of the hottest moves in wrestling as far as something that's just completely innovative and is taking people by storm. And if he can hit it on Sterling James Keenan, he could have a uh, successful debut. Go behind takedown by Keenan and a quick counter into an arm bar by Petey Williams. In a recent interview with Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine, AJ Styles himself admitted he could not believe what he was seeing when he first saw the Canadian Destroyer. That's how great it is, but we can't shortchange Sterling. Sterling's had some positive stuff going on as well. You certainly can't shortchange Sterling. This is a guy who just beat Classic Cole Cabana, as of course he will not hesitate to tell you. Good counter by Williams. Snaps him off the ropes and pop up into a Rana and Keenan is out. Petey Williams looking impressive right off the bat. And it wasn't just any victory. A victory that snapped a week's long losing streak. Sanjay Dutt, Larry Zabisco, Soldier, etc., etc. All beat Sterling. Oh, no. Out. Oh, Keenan clobbering Petey Williams as he came through the ropes, put an end to that tope attempt. And Sterling has gotten back on the winning track, got himself a little bit of a new look, beating Cole Cabana. But one thing you have to give him credit, no matter how deep he was in that losing streak, he never lowered his level of competition. Sanjay Dutt came along, he issued an open challenge to him. Former two-time world champion Larry Zabisco came along. Two, an open challenge was issued to him too. Keenan will not back down from anybody because he has been to the top of the mountain in the IWC. And now that he's broken that losing streak, he could be ready to start a new winning streak that could possibly take him to the top again. And a back suplex by Petey Williams. And if Keenan can string together wins over Cabana and Petey Williams, that'll put him to the really right to the top of everybody's mind here in the IWC and other promotions as well. No doubt about it. Look at who Petey Williams is. Look at the belt he has. The TNA X Division title. Arguably the most competitive division in wrestling today. Look at the names that have held that belt. Roll up. Roll up. And Williams gets two. AJ Styles, Jerry Lynn, Sean Waltman, Low Key, Kid Cash. Oh, backbreaker by Keenan. Michael Shane. So many of the great young athletes have held that championship, and Petey Williams is in great company. As far as I'm concerned, we have, we have a cover. Two guys there. Petey Williams is definitely deserving of being amongst those, that list of people. That's right. He's really starting to, to carve his legacy into this NWA X Division title belt. It is not on the line here, but Keenan says if he wins, he's going to take the belt and drive away with it. Speaking of important titles, we have an important title on the line from another promotion. Oh, up on yes. September 25th. Ring of Honor champion Samoa Joe defends against the fallen angel Christopher Daniels. It's IWC boiling point. Oh, huge danger, German Super. And it's September 25th right here at CCAC, our final show here in West Midland for a while. You can't miss that. That's wrestling history, Jeff. And as you recall, yes, Ring of Honor had its two Pittsburgh shows right here at the CCAC. Nice clothesline with a leg trip as well. And it's really going to be something when Samoa Joe brings the Ring of Honor title up against Christopher Daniels, a guy who is not currently competing in ROH. So that's kind of an exclusive ROH title match that we'll be bringing you here in IWC. Should be quite something. And Daniels has a great legacy in ROH for the prophecy. Swing and a miss. Here comes Williams. Satellite head scissors into a Russian leg sweep. And that's a testament to how great IWC is. The X Division champion of the second largest promotion in the country. The heavyweight champion of the third largest promotion in the country. Both competing right now in the IWC ranks. And we were just talking to a fan during intermission. He was saying that uh, IWC has really been something special and has really taken it to another level. Of course, uh, we have a lot of the legacy of Steel City Wrestling from the late 90s, which was outstanding. But the IWC is looking really, really like something else here in 2004. It's Williams who just got... He actually just planted the boots right to the throat of Keenan and a big DDT. Williams is very tough to defend. He comes out from a second. different angle. Might be time to start reeling him in. Sterling's put up a great effort so far, but oh yeah, he's reeling him in. This is the setup, Jeff. Here we go. The Canadian destroyer. Keenan could be in trouble. Keenan's kind of a tall guy for him to put this move on. Let's see if he can do it. Oh, here it comes. 
Oh, 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 time. No counter. Oh, counter into a water wheel slam. Keenan had that well scouted. The fans were just clamoring, waiting to see that move up close and in person finally. But Sterling stopped it all for them. Now Sterling has second life. That's exactly what Keenan needed to do. MK Ultra time. Here we go. Keenan, he could hit it. This is how he won the title. Yes! Got it. MK Ultra, that's two Wait, and no. Oh, he's in the ropes. Great ring presence by Petey Williams. Sterling James Keenan a few inches too close to the side of the ring. And Petey Williams, that's that championship mentality, was able to get on the ropes. That's right, a smart move by Williams, who's a very young star. He's got a lot of future ahead of him. Here we go again. Could be a sit-out powerbomb. He's going to roll him through. He's not going to go for the pin there. He could have had him there. Look at Petey. He's obviously out of it right now. I'm surprised Keenan didn't go for the pin, but he's obviously got something else in mind. Maybe another MK Ultra. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Canadian Destroyer trying to fight out of it. No, it looks like Keenan was going for the MK Ultra. Here now he is. Ah! Oh! Canadian gets Destroyer. Canadian. No, thank you. Well, Petey Williams and that move, the Canadian Destroyer, certainly lived up to all the hype. He is the NWA X Division Champion, and he has made his mark a great debut here in the IWC. Add Petey to the long, illustrious list, Jeff. The list of people who won over the entire crowd and only needed one night to do it. That's how great Petey is. And the fans say it all. Please come back. Everyone looks really 
good broadcast call. The fan did. But the fans, we were right over there talking about this. championship is on the line. We've got Eric Ecstasy defending against Shirley Doe. I'm Jeff Gorman along with Joe Dombrowski and this title match we've been waiting a long time to see it Joe and it's finally here. It's actually all. Woohoo! Big slap to start things off. Blatant bit of disrespect and what a better place to have the third championship match between these two than right here at CCAC South. Look at the fans. They're into this. They're happy. They're dressing up like their favorite stars. I even see a replica Eric Ecstasy out there. That's right. Complete with the feather boas. As if a real Eric Ecstasy wasn't enough, we have a replica Eric Ecstasy. Ecstasy taking his time here. And Doe, in his pre-match statement, talked about the legacy of Champions Past, and he wants Eric Ecstasy to live up to that. And oh. another huge slap! When you talk to Doe, it's obvious how much a heavyweight championship means to him, and how much respect and pride he feels a champion should carry that belt with. But Ecstasy's been trying to take the easy way out as many times as possible, including in his matches with Doe. He said do it again! He's daring him. Nope, I don't think so. This is on, the title on the line, Doe hammering ecstasy. Surely Doe has done a lot here in the IWC. Is this the night that he finally takes home the goal? All the work, all the hard anguish, all the match of the year caliber contest, the high stakes titles, everything. But he has not won the top prize in the company yet. This could be his greatest chance yet. No Wonder Man Glenn Spectre at ringside, no distraction. Oh, another slap. And Doe fires back in kind, and the fight is on. And Ecstasy not taking a power. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doe. Japanese-style forearm shots back and forth as Ecstasy gains the advantage. And Doe is really trying to bring the best out of Eric Ecstasy. Bruce Gray goes down, and Ecstasy lays in these shots. Doe, you can tell how important this is to him. Wow, that was big. Doe does not just want to win the title. He wants to win the title from a great champion. That's important to Doe. And Bruce Gray trying to intervene. He gets pushed off to the side. This should be mano a mano. No referees involved. You know, I think Bruce Gray has to really back off here and let these guys go at it, or he might get hurt and might not be able to really officiate this match. I don't think Gray should be getting in there like He's this. trying his best, but it might be a lost cause. Remember the first matchup between these two men? And a disqualification victory for Doe. Not the way he wanted it. The second match, neither of these matches were televised, but they were very important. Glenn Spector's interference cost Shirley Doe the match in the title that night. And Doe, he's got a smile on his face. This is the match he wants. He wants a hard-fought, competitive title match without outside interference or offbeat shenanigans. Whoa! And, and after that second title match, XC started putting roadblocks in the way. Said, Doe, if you want a shot, you have to be Wonder Man Glenn Spector. Despite all the odds, despite Chris Wood, Doe's hated enemy as a guest referee, he still was able to gain victory. And it could be the destiny of Shirley Doe. He made it through that incredibly tough situation. This could be his night to win it all. Especially after Doe survived that brutal feud with Sebastian Dark. It raged for months, no end in sight. And in fact, at one point, Doe, last fall, walked, was about to walk out of this building and walk out of pro wrestling. But now he's back in competing for the title. We're so far away from that. Now Doe is back on top trying to gain the championship. And strange to say, that feud with Sebastian Dark really brought the best out of Shirley Doe. Here we go. Oh, out to the floor goes Doe. Ecstasy sidestepping the madman. Now Ecstasy has a plan of what to do with Doe on the floor. Remember, Ecstasy's in a good spot here. He cannot lose the title out on the floor. Even if he gets the worst of this fight, he should be in pretty decent shape. This is definitely... Oh. Into the apron. Might have even gotten him into those ring steps there. Look out. What's Ecstasy have in mind here? This is Doe's territory, but Ecstasy's excelling. On the floor of the suplex? No. Doe's going to counter, and he sends him into the side of the ring. Doe's first, right into the edge of that ring. And Ecstasy's saying, maybe this isn't a good idea. Let's go back to the ring. Doe meets him on the apron. Another slap. Look out. Oh, no. Choke slam? Doe counters. Two! 
teed him on the apron and down to the floor. Ecstasy hit Temple first. He's got to be knocked silly. Surely does. He's going to do just about anything here. He's got to try to keep it within the rules, though. He's got to avoid any kind of a DQ or something like that. Doe has to end this match in the ring. And that might be Ecstasy's plan. Try to take Doe to the outside, lure him there, tempt him with all these objects, objects and try to get another cheap DQ victory. Here he comes with the big lariat on the floor. And the champ, Ecstasy, is down. Here we go. One more Head time. of steam. Blocked it. Oh! A, a riding bomb on the wood. Modified version of it, almost a version of the uh, Baldo bomb by uh, A Train of WWE fame. Picking up by the throat and hitting a sit out slam. Ecstasy hitting that move out of desperation. He knew he did not want to get another clothesline in the face. He managed to counter it, and Doe really took the, a hard shot on the floor, and Ecstasy says, count him out. Another attempt at a cheap victory. Ecstasy, ever since going back to his old sexual harassment, arrogant persona and attitude, he's just been so unbearable, and he's just been such a coward. Whether it was with Jimmy Jacobs or John McChesney or Shirley Doe or Sharkboy or anybody, Eric Ecstasy will always take the easy way out. But unfortunately for the fans, this is where Eric Ecstasy is his most successful. We remember how successful that team with JT Rogers' sexual harassment was, and now using those same style tactics, foot on the ropes, only two. Using those same tactics, Ecstasy is on top here in the IWC. Very true. No one can deny that sexual harassment it was arguably the most dominant tag team in IWC history. Hooks a leg in the middle of the ring and Doe kicks out. And he's using that attitude and demeanor to parlay that into single success. It's worked so far, but it's only a matter of time before these actions get caught on to and his title reign comes to an end. Will Doe be the man to do it tonight? I think no one deserves it more than Doe. He has the respect and adulation of everyone in the back and everyone sitting here. This, I hope it's Doe's time. And these fans cheering for Doe, starting to get under the champ's skin, cranking this cravat on Shirley Doe. And notice him twisting away at the neck, setting up for a sexually transmitted driver. Right. Doe able to counter here with the go behind. Ecstasy off the ropes, and a close line takes Doe down. Doe might have been going for a German suplex there. Big mistake if you ask me. Only here two. After Eric Ecstasy's lady killer. Ecstasy. Unable to hook that the way he wanted to. And Doe able to kick out of the Lady Killer, as you mentioned. The champion. Doe puts on the brakes and catches him hard with the elbow. Ooh! Caught him with the boss man slam. Goes for a pin again. And Doe kicks out again. Very lackadaisical cover. I'd always wait leaning up against Doe rather than over top of it. Well, now we're going to see what kind of a champion Eric Ecstasy is because Shirley Doe is getting the match he wanted. Hard fought, clean title match. Two count, another two count. I'll, I'll give credit to Ecstasy. He's performed admirably thus far. He's taken it to Doe in the ring, on the floor, everywhere. And now working on the cravat one more time, trying to soften up that neck. And if Ecstasy can beat Doe in the middle of the ring, that will put some luster on uh, Ecstasy's title belt. Again, going for that German, and a low kick breaks it up. Double axe handle to the back of the head. Another shortcut with that low blow. No one can deny that Eric Ecstasy is deserving of being champion. He has all the tools needed to make it big. And he beat Dean Radford for the title at a point where Radford was really, really hot. But let's see if he can keep the belt here. Hard right hands wind up. Doe says, no thank you. And he takes out the knee. Here we go. Shiny Wizard is blocked. Doe went for the weakened point in Eric's anatomy. Remember how much time he spent out thanks to that leg injury? Might be going for the happy ending. That's right, he's going for it, but Doe's blocking it. That fool Nelson into a face buster, and he modifies well, it into the top turnbuckle. Yeah, he hit it into the turnbuckle. That, now he's going to go for it in the ring. Happy ending! Fans cheering for Doe. Ecstasy sheds the elbow pad. The champ goes for the pin. This could be all. And two, and no, two. Just, just barely. Ooh. When Ecstasy breaks out one of those signature power moves, the happy ending, the Exorcist, the STD, it's almost always the end of the line for the opponent. Ecstasy has a lot of ways to beat you. And that doesn't even count cheating. 
Irish whip sends Doe in very hard. Just look at how XT mangled Jimmy Jacobs two weeks ago. Summer Sizzle threw him all over the building en route to retaining his title. And we'll see what he does with Doe here. Doe, like Jacobs, able to absorb a ton of punishment, and he's really taking a beating right now. And Doe trying to weather this storm. The champ moves in. And just working him over in the corner, ref trying to get him out of there. Bruce Gray may have to step in here. And another slap to the face. Come on, Bruce. Draw the line somewhere. Got to get him out of the corner. Of course, the champ doesn't care if he gets DQ'd, you know. That's a great point. He might be trying to intentionally instigate Bruce Gray. Oh! Powerbomb out of the corner. And there's that Baldo bomb variation from Doe onto Ecstasy. If he can sit up, he might be able to get a cover. Here we go. That's two. No, the champ kicks out. Well, well wait a second. What? what? We got Chris Wood and Wonder Man Glenn Spector. I was really enjoying their lack of presence here. Commission representative Chris Wood has had a score to settle with the hardcore Doe for a long time. But this is not a hardcore match. Here comes Spector. Wood distracting the referee. Come on. That's just what this match did not need. I think he's ordering Bruce Gray to leave the ring. He's telling him he's too tired or something. Well, he has been refereeing every match tonight. Come on, he's fanning him off. He is taking Bruce Gray out of here for his own good. Whoa! Palm strike by Spectre. That's stunned though. XG going up top. Here we go. Vader Bomb. Who's the man? To perfection. And now he says Bruce Gray back in the ring. Two. No! Joe grabs the ropes. Grab the ropes. Another gut instinct move now, and Bruce is back arguing with Wood now, as Joe tries to recover. One minute, Chris Wood says, get out of here, Bruce, you're too tired. Next minute, he sends him back in the ring. Bruce is getting pretty upset out there. He just wants to do his job. This is ridiculous. Eric going for it again. Wood is still in Bruce Gray's face. Remember, Wood is not an IWC official. Whoa, he missed the second one. An official of a higher power. Of, of the state. Pennsylvania State Athletic oh, German suplex to wow. FC. I don't believe it. He's been wanting to hit that all match. He finally did Joe's it. Joe's got to cover. Well, don't beat the odds again. He's no. no. Only two. Bruce Gray just pushed Chris Wood aside to get in the ring and make the count. Wood is upset. Spectre's on the apron. We're losing all control of this title oh. match. Joe just took Spectre out of the picture. And a shining wizard knocks him off the apron and into the fans. But here comes Ecstasy oh, with no. the STD. Sexually transmitted driver, but can he follow up? The distraction set it up. Yes. That's going to be two and three. No. No. That was not three. Another kick out by Joe. Finally, Chris Wood and Glenn Spector out of the picture. Looked like Ecstasy was going to use their distractions to win the match, but Shirley Doe is still in this IWC title match. But what inspector are still looming ominously on the outside? Ecstasy is very upset that wasn't the finish. Irish whip. Doe off the ropes. Body press. Takes him down. Ecstasy right back up, though, to his credit. Still yet, two. Oh, he got it. Here we go. One, two. No! Unbelievable. I have to give credit where that is. I've been a harsh critic of ecstasy, but anyone who kicks out of that deserves to be the champion. That's right, but Doe says it's over now. Great back and forth match. Both guys bringing in the big guns. Wow, what a lariat to the back of the head. And to the front. Ecstasy still dazed and confused. No, he kicked out. That silly head two variation took so much out of ecstasy. He may be living on borrowed time now. Shirley Doe may be the next heavyweight champion. Here we go. He may try it again. One. Hey, what? what? That's the fake. We got, we got a fan. That's little, the fan dressed as Eric Ecstasy interfered. A little too overzealous there. STD again. We can understand being a fan of Eric Ecstasy, but but You're not now. supposed to interfere. And there's, that's two, and that's three. There's limits and boundaries. And now he's to, coming in the ring. Get some... It's a security out here. Come on! This, is, this fake Eric Ecstasy caused the real this, one to retain the title. This, uh, of course, the dress. What? Who is that? That's, that's J Rock! J Rock? What? J Rock? Oh, come on! Why on earth is J Rock 
helping Eric XT Glenn Spector. Is, is J-Rock on the other side of the fence now, too? I hope he's not on the other side of the fence in that way, Joe. But he's certainly on XTC's team. You know, he came out here. He was here the entire show dressed up as XTC, but his face was all covered up. I was thinking, who is this fan who has, like, a mask and an ecstasy outfit? It turns out it was J-Rock all the time. Ecstasy always has a backup plan. Ecstasy is always outthinking everybody else, and it kept the IWC heavyweight title in tow tonight. It took three other guys to do it, but Eric Ecstasy is still the champ. Joe, I really want to see Shirley Doe get another title shot, and I want it to be a fair fight. The odds just keep mounting against him. Ecstasy still the champ.
a submarine, AJ. And Homicide is out here to win and possibly win quickly. Big drop kick by AJ Styles, and the respect match is underway. Here comes AJ with a pescado. Styles wastes no time breaking out the heavy artillery in this match of the utmost importance. Introduce us. I'm Jeff Gorman, and my partner is Joe Dombrowski. I respect you, but that's what is going to have to happen here. The loser is going to have to say he respects the winner. That's a respect match. Remember how this all started back in our Summer Sizzler show? It was a three-way dance, Styles, Homicide, and Christopher Daniels. Homicide was the first one eliminated. No shame in that. He himself is one of the best in the world against two of the best in the world as well, but he couldn't take it. Attacking Styles, a pool of our brawling suit right in the middle of the match. Well, Homicide, an outstanding wrestler, but when things don't go his way, he can really go crazy. We've seen him in Ring of Honor try to uh, challenge Samoa Joe. He hasn't been able to win the title yet, and it's really sent him into a total frenzy. <coughs> and we're starting to see that a little bit here in IWC. Homicide came out here, and not exactly playing by the rules, but he was pretty much ready to keep the match in the ring, etc., etc. But as time's gone on, he has gotten a little bit more desperate, a little bit more out of control in his attempts to get a victory here. Don't forget Samoa Joe debuts Ew. here September 25th right here at CCAC South for IWC Boiling Point. But right now the focus is on Homicide and AJ. You know, we talked before about how if you develop a losing streak here in IWC, you can get so insecure and so self-conscious. You don't want to fall off the IWC radar, so you'll do whatever it needs to be done to stay on the map. That's what Homicide did. He went down to 0-2 in IWC. Both losses to AJ Styles. Again, no shame in that, but he had to make a mark for himself. And he can turn it all around here if he can beat AJ in this respect match because not only will he have the win, but AJ would have to say, Homicide, I respect you. And AJ is one of the most respectful people in this business. I don't think AJ would have any problem in saying he respects Homicide if he loses cleanly, if that should happen. But Homicide doesn't seem to have much respect towards AJ, even though AJ has proven on at least two occasions that Look he was this. the better man on that night. Look at this struggle for control on the ground. Amateur style wrestling here. Good job riding him, AJ, and Homicide's out. Both of these guys are among the most well-rounded you can find. AJ can wrestle any style. AJ and Hom Homicide can wrestle or fight any style. Perfect matchup for each other. Homicide taking his time. He's got the, the, the camera core. Trying to get a little bit of a break here. We should mention our uh, guys taping the show, Digital Horizons. They do a really wonderful job. Also, thank our other video colleagues, Smart Mark Video. Yes. Of course, our friends at ROHWrestling.com oh, yeah. who sell our top DVDs. All right, we've plugged just about everybody. This is Hell Hath No Fury, the main event of the live event here at CCAC. Good job there. AJ Styles taking control here with a front face lock on Homicide. And AJ comes in with so much confidence. He has beaten Homicide a couple times, but he's also held every title in the NWA twice. AJ always comes into every match knowing that he can win. In fact, he's the only man to hold our Super Indie title twice. And remember the importance of their matchup the first time they met in IWC. Back last April at a Gangster's Retribution when AJ defended his Super Indie title against Homicide. That match went all over the place. One of our forerunners for match of the year so far this year. I expect nothing different now. Homicide controlling AJ with the armbar and twisting it into a cross armbreaker submission hold. And AJ smartly trying to roll through to alleviate the pressure. But Homicide also smartly tries to keep him in the ring. Good counter by AJ now. And he's going to turn it right into a sharpshooter. AJ was able to sneak up on top of Homicide, get all the leverage in his favor. Now AJ Styles has the upper hand. And rolling over into the front face lock one more time. So these two have faced each other a few times now here in the IWC, and they're going to bust out some different moves than we've seen. Homicide working on the arm. Nice hammer lock. Rolls him down. Oh, good submission hold here. Has it hooked behind the head. Lucha style submission. I noticed no wasted motion from either of these men. Everything they do has a purpose, and it has an eventual goal. Homicide. One of the top stars in the United States. Of course, he's wrestled several times for Big Japan as well. But he has really come in here sharp. I mean, he's been very focused. He knew he wanted to start the match quickly with that, uh, you know, throw the thing in, in the face. And another submission hold here. England, Puerto Rico, Germany. Homicide's been 
just about everywhere, but then again, as has AJ. AJ's been to Japan, AJ's been to Europe, AJ's been all over the place. Both these guys have been able to travel the world, as we see in your ball, and gain so much knowledge from so many different styles. Version of the rings of Saturn here, he's bringing the right arm behind his own head, trying to get a submission here. And pulling it forward for extra torque, not, not chicken winning the arm, but rather there pulling it, it over his head. Now he's got the rings of Saturn strapped in. I'm not sure if he's going to get a submission. He's probably not because Styles is getting the legs out of the way. And he's going to hook Homicide for a pin and two. AJ's won many a match with that, with that simple rollover and weight and momentum. He's been able to surprise a lot of rivals. In fact, I believe that maybe how he defeated Homicide here a few months ago, but did not get it off as quickly now as he wow. did that. Good leg bar there. Another dangerous Styles weapon you need to look out for is his discus lariat. He's won several matches in IWC with that as well, and he can pull that out of nowhere. If the Styles clash ends up failing him, look out for that lariat. Actually, this move looks like a leg lock, but it's actually called an Achilles tendon hold, and that can be a very vulnerable point on the body. When you see someone go for that move, they're actually cranking on the Achilles tendon, and you can see it's working on Homicide there. And we see them tie up one more time. The fans really getting into this. AJ Styles, one of the biggest crowd favorites here in the IWC, but of course Homicide has his fans too. And there's the first cheap shot of the match. Homicide going to the eyes, raking away at the back, showing that he'll do whatever it takes to make sure he does not lose a third time. Big shot. As we see, this is the game plan Homicide had. Start the match fast, and apparently don't be afraid to, to cheat. I can understand that mentality. Look where Homicide's been. Look how successful he's been. Now he comes to a competitive environment like IWC, and he doesn't do so well. It's got to be so frustrating with someone so used to so much success. Well, there's really no shame in it for Homicide, because pretty much anybody is going to not do well when they're going up against AJ Styles or Christopher Daniels. But like I said, Homicide is wrestling at a very, very high level, and he's very... Whoa! Very competitive, not just with his opponents, but with himself. Homicide really demands a lot from himself. The momentum of that knife edge chop drilled Styles back into this hardwood floor. It was really a double impact move there, the chop and then the landing. And AJ Styles slow to get up. Homicide just waiting now, plotting his next strategy, thinking moves ahead. Right on him. AJ As right where he wants him. Jawbreaker, rocking AJ, he's really keeping him off balance. And sets him up for a hangman's neck breaker. Obviously, I might be trying to slow the pace down a little bit, try to get the crowd out of this matchup. The advantage the crowd can give you and the adrenaline and momentum it can give you in a match is somewhat underestimated. The crowd can change an entire dynamic of any given match. Has the legs grapevine and now cranking back on that double rear chin lock. Look at the torque being from that lower back. Look at that body being stretched in ways it was not meant to. Homicide really wrestling a smart match here. And that, well, AJ able to reach the ropes here. We'll see if it's enough to get that elusive victory over the phenomenal AJ Styles. Homicide moving in. And another huge shot. Styles fighting back. Whoa, and it is a Geary. That's what Styles will do. He'll really cross you up. Classic AJ offense right there. He can pull something out of nowhere. Caught him with a nice drop kick to the side of the head, and Homicide moves in one more time. Obviously, you know, fatigue setting in on AJ Styles. Countered it in midair. Two count. Homicide go for a back suplex, but Styles shifted his weight. AJ didn't get all he could on that integrity kick, but he's still able to come back, and a blistering shot by AJ sends Homicide spiraling down. Styles putting the boots. To homicide, trying to get some sustained offense in this match. And snaps him over with a power slam. Bruce Gray in fabulous position for a two count. Give the man credit. He's refereed every match tonight. Bruce Gray is a true Iron Man, but it looks like this matchup is opening up more, favoring more towards a brawling aspect now. Less technical wrestling. These guys are getting down and dirty to prove which one's right. And the brawling wouldn't seem to favor AJ Styles, but we'll see if he can do it. Here we go. Homicide air mails him to the apron. What oh, a hard shot right in the face. Springboard into a forearm in the face. It was a great defensive move. Homicide was winding up for a big shot, but AJ caught him first with a short shot. AJ gets so much momentum off of that springboard. That forearm shot is just so devastating. Sets him up. German turned him loose, but Homicide landed first. Whoa! Enziguri 
caught him in the arm. And there's the German. And I think the fans definitely respect both these guys. But it's going to come down to one of these guys admitting their respect for the winner at the end of this match. Here comes AJ Homicide putting on the brakes. Look out. Right off the apron into the phenomenon, oh. but Homicide stopped it. Homicide throwing a knee up right to the forehead of AJ. Stop. AJ's looking for the Look out. Hello. And an insane Tope Conilo through the rope. AJ tried to hit the phenomenon on the hard four. He tried to incapacitate Homicide, but Homicide counters. Unbelievable flip suicide dive. Homicide hits that move whenever he can with absolutely no regard to his own health and safety. He's almost knocked himself silly with this move many times in the past. And again, you see the toll that it takes on both men. Definitely the damage done. Homicide just now getting out to a vertical base and dragging AJ back towards the ring area with him. And, and, the, black, like, and the black people just took over. New Jack joining us for guest commentary. How you doing, sir? I'm, I'm, I've been drinking. Ah. We got AJ and a homicide here. This is a respect match. Of course, the loser has to say, I respect you to the winner. They ain't got to say nothing. They ain't doing it because they supposed to do it. Me, myself, if I beat him, I wouldn't tell him I respect him nothing. i figure out a way to beat him again and come back and beat the draws off of him. And there's the phenomenon in the ring and two and a half. New Jack, we have two great athletes in the make. Can you offer us a prediction? My prediction? If I hit the ring, the match will be a lot more exciting. I'll come in the ring with knives, forks, spoons, sticks, bricks, and bottles and beat the crap out of everybody, the referee, the pregnant lady, the crippled kid with a wheelchair. I don't care who wins the match because it don't mean nothing to me. I like blood. I like violence. I like blood, guts, and bloods and blood. <laughs> I got a tongue twister. And you know, Joe, I don't know about you, but I can't argue with that. I don't think you can either. Come on, Joe, say something. AJ moving in. Say the ring announcer was distracting me. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, he does that from time to time. As AJ hooks up Homicide. Homicide countering. And there's an Enzigiri by Styles. Homicide is wobbly. We can see the Styles clash right here. This could be the end. No, Homicide kicked AJ in the face to get out of that move. Are we going to see? Hey, oh Trigger Driver. Homicide's going to get... Two. Homicide with so many great and unique counters to all of AJ's offense. We've seen him co a counter the phenomenon. Counter he the hit him with a lucha total starter, the leaper de lava. That's right. He did that a couple minutes ago, and that's going to be a two count. He almost hit him, but he kicked out. New Jack with some lines from Mike Today's playbook. That was the Exploder, or the Tazplex, as it's often called. But only two count on the Tazplex. He almost split his rectum. <laughs> oh, what an interesting job this is. Both men back up to a vertical base. Are we going to... Homicide, is he going for a Styles Clash, perhaps? <laughs> that would be something. AJ drops to one knee, tries to put that himself like hurt. in a dead weight. Homicide trying to he can't get, get him AJ up. back up. Is he going to go for the cop killer here, possibly? No. Styles oh, blocked it there. Homicide's getting ready to hit something big. He hit him in the bicep for those who don't understand. Kaboom! Discus Lariat, you were talking about that move earlier, That could be the end of this match. That's how he beat Chris Daniels back in Super 83 when I was calling that match with Falls Mahoney. Good friend and of yours. And for those who don't understand, he's just hitting with the Negro to start him. Now the question, Joe, is who's the better color commentator, New Jack or Balls Mahoney? New Jack. <laughs> I have to agree. And the score is 2 to nothing. I wasn't there for Balls, but I'm going to say 3 nothing. New, New, New Jack, Jack is your winner. New Jack's just a little less drunk than Balls was. I am not drunk. I've just been drinking since last night. Well, that clears that up. Homicide knocking AJ off the top. It's a matter of respect between these two. Re respect what? They got to say, I respect you. Whoever loses has to Who say that. Who pays child support more than other? AJ pays child support more. Black people don't pay child support. Oh, 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 suplex off the top. Oh, we got to get back in this match. Got too? He's got the ball. How can they not be three? Unbelievable tenacity in AJ's part. Double arm shoot, but from the top, he still kicks out. I'm amazed AJ kicked out of that homicide so close to getting that long-awaited victory. He hit it with a burrito tostada. That reminds me, I've got to get some Taco Bell after this match. Who needs Kingdom James? They've got that new lime-flavored Mountain Dew. It's going to get me all the way back to Ohio. Please, focus. Big shot by oh. Homicide. Hard knife fix. Been... And for those that don't know, everybody, every time they chop him, it's talking about woo. Ric Flair did not invent the chop. Wahoo and Daniels invented it. Ric Flair stole it. So they shouldn't say woo, they should say wahoo. Is that they what you're say saying? Wahoo. 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 
We're going to have to remember that. Wahoo. Wahoo. Okay. It ain't woo. It's wahoo. Remember that, fans. <laughs> Both these guys trying to recover. AJ with a... Uh, uh, That's Ebonics. Woo is Ebonics for wahoo. AJ with a rapid fire DDT earlier. Both men down, trying to get back up to the vertical base. The physical toll has taken so much out of these men so far, and we're not even done yet. Full Nelson, Homicide trying to counter. One of these guys has to hit a big move to win this, but look at the struggle here. Look out for... Oh, ref didn't see that. A low blow, and again, Homicide with a cheap shot. Great placement of colorblind Bruce Gray, turning him over and hitting the low blow. And the man's all about color, huh? And Homicide... Man, all we gotta be a color thing, huh? He can't see colors. Oh, the it's ref... gotta be color. It's the black and white issue now, huh? Not to Bruce Gray. Ah, That's down. all we can see. Pimples off your Look face, at this. Boy. Homicide. Homicide is saying that AJ hit him low. Homicide hit AJ low, and now he's complaining of a low blow. I've never seen that before. You know me and Homicide was in a car wreck. You guys okay? No, Homicide was DUI. He said he saw a reindeer. <laughs> and there was no reindeer in the mountains. <gasps> and I had a cut on my boy. <laughs> he's going to go for it Both again. Up top, double arm countered. Headbutts him. Oh. Tries to get him right where he wants him. Come on, Mr. TV announcer. Do your job. Here we go. Oh, stop the flash. Flash. We he get caught the the leg. Flash. Look out. He's going to get him. Homicide trying desperately to break free. He's fighting with all the legs. He can't down. do it. Oh, the second old Styles Clash. Victor Burbank pin. He got it. AJ wins it. <laughs> I wouldn't shake his hand. I'll smack the taste out of his mouth. That doesn't surprise you. With the behavior Homicide's been showing recently, will he, in fact, honor the contract and say, I respect you? I don't know. This is going to be a bitter pill to swallow. There's no shame in losing to AJ Styles. I say, don't shake his hand. Okay, New Jack says, don't shake his hand. Would you shake his hand? Don't shake his hand. Would you, Joe? I, I would adhere by the contract. I probably would, but you But I'm not as reckless as New Jack. Forget the contract. Slap the taste out of his mouth and go to a strip club. Don't shake his hand. Well, New Jack has made his reputation for doing what he wants, not abiding by the rules. We're going to see if Homicide will abide by the Homicide's rules. Homicide's been very frustrated here lately. Does he have what it takes to say, I respect you? Or is he going to walk off and continue this rivalry? Well, first of all, Homicide trying to recover from that devastating Styles clash off the ropes. And dropped him right in his ribs. You see him trying to get some air in those lungs, trying to to heal his ribs any way he can. AJ waiting with bated breath to see what Homicide is going to do. Let's see. And the fans showing that they certainly respect Homicide. Here we go. Homicide's been through a lot. I say don't shake his hand. New Jack still says he shouldn't say... I Rob him and go home with the money. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. I apologize, fans. Oh. <laughs> Homicide shot to show what kind of man he is. Here we go. Homicide extending his hand in a display of respect. No, he's not going to do it. He's Wait, walking off. Come on. Now, come on, Homicide. That was the stipulation. I thought this was a man of honor, Jeff. He is a man of honor. But it's, it's, it's a, he's got so honor much... Honor is paying child support. So you don't have no warrants. That's honor. <laughs> There's a different definition of honor. Y'all don't understand it because y'all don't pay child support, you crooks. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Honor is pickpocketing. Homicide, a man with so much pride. Is he going to do it? You gotta shake his hand and pickpocket him. That's honor. The fans, fans want him to. They're behind him 100%. They respect him just like they should. Here we go. He doesn't want to do it. This is very tough for him. This is one of the toughest things in his career. He's got so much competitive pride. You can tell he wants so bad to fight back and continue this war and have another shot at AJ Styles. I say rob him. Here we go. That's what we like Here to we see. Here we go. 
a true class act by a class individual. He lived up to his stipulation. I'd have shook his hand and I'd have big pocketed him and I'd have kidnapped his kids. <laughs>